In this video, we're going to take a look at another way we can solve a system of equations, or find the pair of numbers that makes two different equations, or more, true. We're going to use a method called substitution, which is much better than graphing in actual application, because quite often with graphing, if the numbers get large, or if we don't have an exact whole number solution, graphing might not be the most accurate or efficient way to solve a problem. The idea behind substitution is based on a principle we've seen before. In this problem, we have x equals 5 and y equals 2x minus 3. I'm telling you that x equals 5 for this problem, so when I see an x in the other problem, or the other equation, I know that x is representing the number 5. So what we can do is replace that x with what it represents, or what it's equal to. This will give us y equals 2x, or 2 times 5, minus 3. We can actually work out 2 times 5, minus 3. 2 times 5 is 10, minus 3, and finally, 10 minus 3 is 7. We now know that y is 7 and x is 5, and so we could say without even graphing, we know the point where these two lines are going to intersect. Points are x, comma, y in order, so it's going to be 5, comma, 7 is going to be the solution to this system of equations. It is the pair of numbers that makes both of these equations true. We can extend this idea a bit further, and instead of just replacing a variable with the number it represents, we might have a problem such as this one. 2x minus 3y equals 7, and y equals 3x minus 7. Notice the second equation says y equals 3x minus 7. In other words, y is the same as 3x minus 7, or y can be represented by 3x minus 7. In much the same way as we looked at the other equation and replaced the variable with what it represents, we can do this again and replace the y, or substitute the y in the first equation with what y equals in the second equation. The first equation then would be 2x minus 3y, and it must go in parentheses. y is no longer there, it's being replaced with 3x minus 7. And the first equation tells us that this should all equal 7 in the end. We are now able to follow our normal steps for solving equations to solve this equation for x. Distribute the 3, 2x minus 9x plus 21 equals 7. Combine like terms, negative 7x plus 21 equals 7. Subtract 21 from both sides. Negative 7x equals negative 14. And finally, divide both sides by negative 7. And we now know that x is equal to 2. Now that we have our x, we can go back and find our y. What's really nice about this substitution process is when I go back to find what y equals, somewhere I should see a y equals equation that we can use. y is equal, in this case, to 3x, but we just found out x was 2, minus 7. Well, order of operations, 3 times 2 is 6, minus 7. y then must be equal to negative 1. We now know where these two lines are going to intersect each other at an x-y pair. They will intersect when x is 2 and when y is negative 1. This is the pair of numbers that makes both of these original equations true equations. It's the only pair that works, and we found it by taking what y equals and substituting it into the other untouched equation and solve the remaining equation for x. Then we can find y by substituting back in.